super funny, you're gonna love him. Please welcome Jeremy Pinsley! Yeah. Because tonight, there is a very special lady in the audience. Whoa! Damn! Two special ladies. What's up, girl? You alright? I will hit on you after the show. No, but my mom is here. Yeah! my mom! Is this where you saw that college tuition money going? Fantastic. Great. And uh, that guy sitting next to her, it's my stepdad, <laughs> Michael. No, no, don't clap for him. Do not clap for him. No. And on top of it, he thinks he can just marry his way into my life. And on top of that, he's from Canada. And he's a lawyer. You snake in the grass. Disgust me. Actually, Michael's fucking awesome. But uh, he married my mom when I was pretty young, and it took him a while to gain my trust, you know? I'm not just going to let some sneaky foreigner come into my life <laughs> take my mom away from me. You know, you got to earn that. So I messed with him for a while. I would always fake having nightmares so that my mom would let me sleep in bed with him <laughs> keep a little distance between the two. I called it Operation Don't You Even Fucking Think About It. <laughs> And by the end of the night, Michael was so far over to his side of the bed, and I'm cuddled up against my mom. I just look over and I'm like, that's what's up, bitch. <laughs> my mom. <laughs> well, Michael's really cool, and I think the time that I found out that he was really cool was the first time that he took us to a Japanese restaurant. Dinner, dinner was great. It comes time to the bill, and instead of asking for it like a normal person, he goes up to the little Japanese waitress and goes, Chick, please. <laughs> Chick, please. But a lot awesome. <laughs> and he's had my respect ever since. I mean, he's at my show tonight, right? I mean, where's my real dad? <laughs> he's not here. He's not here. It's like Little League Baseball all over again. Papa? <laughs> where's Papa? Oh, I struck out. <laughs> So if you haven't figured it out by now, my parents are divorced. <laughs> Which, contrary to popular belief, was actually pretty awesome for me. Because, well, the only part that sucked was when it first happened, because I was young and I didn't know what the fuck was going on. I was like, divorced, like, mom and dad are being sharing friends? Like, what's going on? And like, to tr prove that I really didn't get it, one time they were at one of my preschool functions, and I was like, mommy, mommy, you gotta come meet my dad! <laughs> Try to introduce him. <laughs> she was like, we met. <laughs> The other part that sucked about it is people kept coming up to me being like when it first happened and they were like, Jeremy, Jeremy, I know this is a tough time, but just know it's not your fault. I was like, I know. <laughs> Wait, are those motherfuckers trying to pin this on me? <laughs> Fuck that, I am only two. I haven't done shit yet. <laughs> if my inability to potty train is keeping you two from being together, I don't think it was meant to be from the beginning. <laughs> And then after all that, though, divorce was great. You know, I figured out what it was. Like, your parents are going to be separated. They're going to be living in separate houses. I was like, two houses? <laughs> Jampa! <laughs> Come on over, MTV Cribs. We got 7,000 combined square feet and three cars, baby. <laughs> and with two houses meant two families. Both of my parents remarried very quickly. And before I knew it, I had a huge family, which was awesome. I mean, yeah, like a bunch of people to be there for me and support me throughout my life. Fucking Michael. <laughs> but I didn't see the real benefits until the holidays came around. Do you realize how many presents I got? My birthday was in December. My family's Jewish, so that's one day for my birthday, eight days for Hanukkah, nine days, twice the family of a normal kid. That's 18 days of presents for me. And the real kicker, my dad just so happened to marry a Christian lady named Sue. Hello, Christmas. <laughs> I felt like a vampire that could survive in sunlight. I had the best of both worlds. I was Jay Walker. And Dad, you're forgiven. You gave me Christmas. No need to be here. You are my 
Santa Claus. <laughs> and the best part of that was my wish list was ridiculous. I felt like royalty. I was like, I'll have two Nerf blaster guns, one of which preferably being the ball zooka, a slip and slap, some Nintendo 64 games, and as many Toys R Us bucks as you can fit to my piggy bank. It's the only currency I need. <laughs> oh, and while I had it, Jeffrey, would you mind running to the refrigerator and grabbing me a Capri Sun? My throat's a bit parched. <laughs> one of the things on my wish list when I was four was a violin for some reason. Like, my parents said I could learn any instrument I wanted, and I went with a fucking violin. It's like the one instrument that gets you absolutely zero pussy. Sorry, Mom. Zero, zero pussy. I can just see the frustration on my dad's face now. We're in the store, and he's like, Jeremy, any instrument you want. And I go straight, I'm like, yeah, I want that one, Dad, the violin. He's like, whoa, whoa. Have you uh, checked out the drums, or perhaps the electric guitar, huh? That, that one, too. I got that one, Dad. Yeah, violin. Hard to be a rock star when you play the violin. I notice that rock stars and violinists do things differently. Rock stars practice in basements and garages, and they get drunk with their friends, and they party. I practiced every morning in front of my mom before I went to school. <laughs> Rock stars have concerts, and after these concerts, they have pretty sweet orgies. We have recitals. And after our recitals, we have a reception. With cookies and punch. Fantastic. To get ready for their shows, rock stars do drugs and wear t-shirts to say, fuck the man. I drank milk, and I wore a blazer slack combo that said, fuck me. Get my ass beat on a regular basis. <laughs> the only rock star thing I ever did when I played the violin was one time I pissed myself in the middle of a song. <laughs> Michael knows all about this one. He, uh, <laughs> he took me to Vanderbilt School of Music in Nashville, Tennessee, a distinguished institution. <laughs> yeah, Doris. <laughs> Fuck you, Michael. remind you, and uh, we get to the end, and I really have to pee, and I have one more song left, and I think I can hold it, so I just try to finish the song and get it done with, but about halfway through, I realized I couldn't do it. So instead of, you know, stopping and asking my teacher if I could go take a bathroom break, I just went for it. <laughs> Peeing and playing. <laughs> for some reason, like, I thought my underwear would, like, absorb it all, and, like, no one else would notice but me, and I'd deal with it later, but no. Within a couple seconds, a day's worth of lemonade and jungle juice was all over my freshly washed khakis. <laughs> my teacher like jumped up like, oh my god. Michael's like, you gotta be shit. <laughs> and being five, naturally, I just started crying. <laughs> so then after, we'll remind you the Vanderbilt School of Music. And Michael has to walk me crying with pants full of piss right out the door. The, uh, you know, I, was, I guess I was just a devoted musician, you know, I want to quit playing, I got to finish the song first, bathroom second. You know, it prepared me for the biggest moment of my life, my first violin recital. I was, uh, I was five years old, again, we're at Vanderbilt, huge auditorium, a lot of people, I was a little nervous, you know, this was my chance in front of my family to show, you know, why a real musician finishes the song before peeing, you know? <laughs> And uh, so we get there, I'm a little nervous, I'm looking at the lineup just to see who all's there, who's coming up, like, who's my competition, who do I have to be better than? And I realized very quickly that I was a lot different than all the other kids there. Going through the names, it's like, Sophie Wong, Yoshi Matsumoto, Kim Kazuki, Kim Lee, Lee Kim, and Jeremy Pinsley. One white kid. <laughs> I was like, fuck these people, I'm gonna dominate this shit. So, uh, so I go up, I'm fucking pumped, I'm ready, I've got all the confidence in the world, my, all the confidence in the world, my blazer, my slacks. Get up there, first thing I do is start, I throw my foot chart on the ground. <laughs> That's right, I bet y'all didn't know, but when you play violin, you get a foot chart. Because God forbid your feet are in the wrong position for you to rock out your violin. <laughs> Rockstar! <laughs> so I'm set, I'm 
ready, my feet are in there, ready to go. Teacher gives me the cue, and uh, I took that audience on a musical journey that they would never forget. I call this Minuet in G by Jeremy Pinsley.